Matthew chapter 6. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Prayer is extremely personal, and it must be discovered and understood on its own terms. There's a touching folk tale of that wonderfully highlights the highly personal nature of prayer. The story rec recounts that there were once a rich, rich and powerful emperor. And one day this emperor found out about a man whose reputation was spreading throughout the kingdom as the most holy man in the kingdom. It was said that this man prayed constantly so the emperor decided he was going to go and visit with this man. And he set out on a journey to a faraway island where this man lived. Much to his surprise, when he arrived, the emperor found just a poor and simple fisherman praying on the shore. He asked the man if he might watch him pray. And the fisherman agreed and continued praying. The emperor watched that man pray for over an hour. The fisherman closed his eyes, he held his head skyward, he moved his lips as if he was talking in his prayer, but he did nothing else. Finally, the emperor stood up and asked the fisherman to stop praying. And then he began scolding the fisherman, telling him that his way of praying was not right. He insisted that the fisherman learn to pray according to the methods used at the palace. Well, the fisherman was patient and he listened he repeated the words and the phrases that the emperor was trying to teach him. When the lesson was over, the little fisherman humbly thanked the emperor and he bowed and he left ashore to return home. Then the emperor got into his boat and feeling really proud of himself that he had taught the simple man how to pray, started heading home. But suddenly, as the boat was approaching about a quarter of a mile out to sea, one of the servants on the boat came running to the emperor, pointing frantically toward the shore. And the emperor gazed back, and lo, he saw the fisherman running after them on top of the water. Within a minute, the old fisherman was literally standing there next to the boat, his feet gently being washed by the waves as he bowed down to the emperor, who was sitting there just astonished. Excuse me, your highness, the fisherman called out, but I have forgotten the words that you taught me. Would you please instruct me once again? And the emperor waved his hands to the fisherman, gesturing him to go back home. No, no, he apologized to the man. Forget what I've taught you. Just continue praying as you did when I first came. <laughs> so what is prayer? What is prayer? Anybody ever heard of a hymn writer by the name of James Montgomery? Well, he wrote these words. Prayer is the soul's sincere desire, uttered or unexpressed, the motion of a hidden fire that trembles in the breast. Prayer is the hidden burden of a sigh, the falling of a tear, the upward glancing of the eye when none but God is near. Prayer is the simplest form of speech that infant's lips can try. Prayer, the sublimest strains that reach the high majesty on high. Prayer is the contrite sinner's voice returning from his ways, while angels in their songs rejoice and cry, Behold, he prays. Prayer is the Christian's vital breath, the Christian's native air. His watchword at the gates of death, he enters heaven with prayer. The saints in prayer appear as one in word and deed and mind, while the Father and the Son sweet fellowship they find. 
nor prayer is made by man alone, the Holy Spirit pleads, and Jesus on the eternal throne for sinners intercedes. O thou by whom we come to God, the life, the truth, the way, the path of prayer thyself hast trod, Lord, teach us how to pray. Well, someone once said, you can pray for absolutely any need. Is that true? No. Is that biblical? No. Huh? No. No? You don't think so? Well, someone named Daniel prayed for help. Bartimaeus prayed for light. David prayed for mercy. Elijah prayed for rain. Hannah prayed for a son. Paul prayed for grace. You can pray, too, just anywhere you want to be, no matter where you are. If you're in the deep ocean, like Jonah, if you're on a housetop, like Peter, if you're on your bed, like Hezekiah, on the mountain, like Jesus, in the wilderness, like Hagar, in the streets, like Jairus, in the cave, like David, even on the cross, like the dying thief. And you can pray, too, in any way you want to. Short as Peter and the publican did, long like Moses at the consecration of the tabernacle or Solomon at the dedication of the temple. But you can't pray for forgiveness against the, damning the Holy Spirit because Jesus said there'd be no forgiveness in this world or the next. Okay, all right, all right. Well, we can talk about that one later, David. Okay. <laughs> That's getting into a whole nother line. Mm -hmm. You can pray in silence as Hannah did in the temple, in your secret thoughts as Nehemiah did with Darius, or aloud, as did the Syrophoenician woman, in tears, as Mary Magdalene did. You can pray, pray in groans or even songs, as David did. You can pray any time, be it in the morning, as David did, at noon, as Daniel did, at midnight, as Paul and Silas did, in childhood, as Samuel did, in youth, as Timothy did, in manhood, as the centurion did, even in old age, as Simeon did, in sickness as Job did, or in death like Jacob and the dying cross, dying Christ. Sometimes even children know more about how to pray than we ever will, or maybe we've just forgotten. A mother went walking by her daughter's room one day, and she heard her daughter reciting the alphabet in a really reverent tone and she opened the door and her daughter was beside the bed. She had her hands folded, A, B, C, D, E, F. And she was going on and on and on. What are you doing, the mother asked. I'm praying, comes the reply. But I can't think exactly what the right words are, so I'm saying all the letters. And I'm gonna let God sort them out the way he wants. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So let's ask the Lord to teach us how to pray. Let's pray. Please teach me, Lord, I want to know exactly how to pray. I need some words, which ones are right? Please tell me what to say. I've bowed my head, I've knelt down, but should I be upright? I've closed my eyes, I've raised my hands, or should I fold them tight? Do I stand up, should I sit down? Dear Lord, what do you like? Are lights on or are they off? Maybe candlelight. Wear my glasses, take them off, be at my desk or table. Should I whisper, speak out loud? Do I quote the Bible? <coughs> what do you think about the time? Do you prefer the dawn? Should I pray fast or keep it slow? Better short or long? I'm new at this. What are the rules? I want to do it right. How do I know you'll even hear that I am in your sight? And while I sat there quietly, waiting for some sign, I heard a gentle voice say, Oh, dearest child of mine, do you think I really care about the time of day or whether you are standing up or kneeling when you pray? I don't care about your posture or about the place you choose. Just open up your soul to me. I have no other rules. Tell me what is in your heart, and tell me what you seek. Tell me of your sorrows, and of those things that make you weak. Speak to me in private about what concerns you most. I know about your good deeds, you have no need to boast. My child, you don't need lessons. 
Just talk to me each day. Tell me anything you want, dear child. Anyone can pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Okay, what you got there? 